welcome to this special final of Spring. This is your host, Gerard Spring, coming to you from the subarctic. So I wanted to take a look at these a couple of these cyclone complexes here, a lot of these anomalous wind patterns in the Arctic, and uh, try to describe how this is affecting things with the sea ice. And uh, in a lot of ways, this video is a follow-up or a continuation of the previous one, uh, which I describe a lot of the anomalous patterns in the jet stream that we've seen. You know, the jet stream coming up here, crossing the North Pole, coming back down, you know, looping down, mixing with the Southern Hemisphere jet over Africa, and then coming back up. So if you're interested in that, I highly recommend taking a look at the previous video. So with a lot of this anomalous jet stream activity, uh, we have to look at the causes at the surface, and we can examine what's going on at the surface. And the surface is basically what we feel, folks. I mean, when we are experiencing weather, we're experiencing what's going on at the surface. So there's a pretty strong link between what's going on with the jet stream and what's going on with the surface. So as you can see here, there's three kind of cyclone activity areas in the Arctic. You know, you have one here off the north coast of Iceland. You have another one here, a very strong one, it looks like, off the coast of Norway up here. And then you have another one up here at the North Pole, you know, very strong cyclone activity. And you can see that there's a lot of strong winds associated with this cyclone activity. You know, 64K here off the coast of Norway, 59K. You know, up here over the open ocean, 50K winds, pretty common. You know, over here off the south coast of Norway, also very strong winds. So what's happening here is you're getting a lot of wind activity at the surface, which is associated with these cyclones. So in the last video, we looked at the sea surface temperature anomaly, and we can see we, why we're getting some of these winds, for example. You know, you have all of this warm water coming up with the Gulf Stream, and it's just pooling up into the Arctic. You know, we have extremely warm waters here, you know, 9.9 .9 degrees C warmer than normal, you know, 1.1 large warm pool, 1, 2 degrees above average, you know, with some other very warm pools. And what this is doing is it's bringing a lot of warm air along with it up into the Arctic. So if we switch back to the air and take a look at the mean sea level pressure, for example, you can see that with each of these cyclones, there's a very strong kind of organized low pressure system around it. You know, we have low pressure here, very low pressure coming up here in the very high Arctic at the North Pole, you know, more low pressure centers. And what's happening is you have all of that warm air is coming up from the Atlantic basin, you know, and warm air is less dense than cold air. So it wants to, to rise. So as that rises up, it creates anomalous jet stream patterns and cold air gets pulled down from other places in the high Arctic. You know, you have cold air getting pulled off over the Greenland ice sheet here. You have more cold air getting pulled in and trained into these low pressure centers from Siberia, for example, a little bit more over here. So a lot of this cold air is getting pulled down. And you can see this going back to the temperature map that you have the cold air extending into the southern latitudes here in a warm area extending very high up into the Arctic. So it's almost as if the cold air is coming down and wrapping around and the warm air is getting entrained as this whole area mixes up in the ocean temperatures and in the air temperatures. So with a lot of these strong winds, folks, uh, you're going to get a lot of breaking up of the sea ice, for example. Um, with a lot of these cyclones, you're going to get a lot more storms. For example, looking at the relative humidity, switching over here, you can see that a lot of this air is carrying a lot of moisture up here. You know, we have moist air coming up here, moist air coming down. And as this cold air comes out over the Atlantic basin, you know, it picks up more and more moisture as it continues north over the water and it gets entrained into these cyclone complexes. And what this is doing is this is creating a lot of very strange rain events up here in the Arctic. You know, for example, up here in Finnmark and Troms, up here in the north of Norway, there was a 
big problem with the reindeer up there because they couldn't get to their food because there was a, a big rainstorm and they basically got stranded. And a lot of the reindeer, you know, sadly died because they were cut off by essentially abrupt climate change. I mean, if we go down, for example, and look at the total precipitable water, just the total amount of water in the atmosphere, we can see that there's this jet of water that's coming up over Europe and getting entrained into the Arctic, bringing rains up into the Arctic, causing these problems. And with a lot of these high winds, folks, uh, what this is doing to the surface of the ocean is it's creating a lot of wave action. You know, for example, here we have 4.52 meter waves. I mean, the Russian islands over here, for example, in the Kara Sea area, uh, we have 3.49 meters, you know, off the coast of Norway, 5.81 meters. I mean, these are very big waves. I mean, even kind of going down here, we have huge wave activity out here in the Atlantic Basin. I mean, 11 meter waves associated with this wind kind of coming off and swirling into these low pressure systems. So huge wave activity, I mean, compared to the rest of the Atlantic Basin just kind of swinging down. Um, and these waves are causing a lot of problems for the sea ice because you have the warm water and on top of that there's a lot of wave activity associated with the cyclones so the sea ice just doesn't stand a chance folks it just breaks up whenever it tries to freeze because of these waves the high winds and the warm waters and if we flip over here and actually look at the sea ice graph we can see that the sea ice isn't doing very well this year so the red line is the 2016 sea ice year. And what you can see here is that you have a minimum here, and then it starts to refreeze, and then it kind of slopes off, and then it refreezes, and then it slopes off, and then it refreezes, and it's kind of sloping off again. So you have this repeating pattern associated with the sea ice uh, kind of slowing down. And with each one of these, there's you know a lot of cyclone activity. You know, the sea ice is basically crashing and running into this brick wall because of a lot of this cyclone activity, a lot of this warm air being pulled up into the Arctic. So if we switch back and look at the air temperatures over the Arctic, we can see that there's a lot of warm air, you know, associated with this cyclone complex, you know, at the surface here in the Arctic, you know, we have minus 2.8 degrees Celsius. That's very, very, very warm, folks. I mean, compare that down here to, you know, the Balkans where we have, you know, similar temperatures, minus 2.8 Celsius. It's even colder in some regions in the mountains in the Balkans and in Turkey than it is at the North Pole in, uh, in November. You know, if you click around here, minus 2 degrees. Over here by the Russian islands, we have above zero temperatures, you know, 0 0.8, 0 0.9 degrees. A lot of this air up here, folks, is 20 degrees C warmer than average. So don't be fooled that, you know, one or two degrees warming doesn't cause a big difference because it honestly really does. You know, if you only have one or two degrees warming in the tropics, you know, you could have much, much more amplified warming up here at the North Pole. So going back to these cyclone complexes and breaking up of the waves, you know, I think we're just going to see more of this as the Arctic continues to warm. And eventually what makes sense, if you switch back to the ocean map here and look at the temperature anomaly, is this whole warm anomaly is eventually going to connect all the way around the Arctic basin. So when you ha start to have sea ice free summers, you're going to see a lot of storm activity in the Arctic as it continues to warm. So I hope you found this useful folks. If you did, please like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for listening.